All right, guys, just a friendly reminder, you do have a vocab quiz tomorrow, 21 through 30. Um, tomorrow's our last day before the test. We have tons of content we got to get through, so we got to move pretty quick. Who can raise your hand and tell me where we left off? Maggie. Malai? Okay. So, yesterday we were talking about um, how we evolved from a kinship, kinship-based government styles to a uh, kingdom style of governments. Why? Fans. Population growth. So Population growth from new food sources for sure. And it's going to cause. Now the Kingdom of Congo we talked about briefly yesterday. They're the ones to really start the whole trading thing. Um, and they're going to be the first ones to really get going. Okay, because of Trans-Saharan trade, we're going to start having trade coming. What is going to show up along this Trans-Saharan trade that has never been in Africa before? What shows up, Alex? Yeah. Well, yes, camels are the ones carrying the trade. But what new thing shows up that's going to have a huge impact, babe? Islam. Islam is going to show up. It's going to have a huge impact. We're going to see it's going to take a huge component. Now, we got to Kingdom of Ghana, which is going to be one of the first real booming economies. And eventually it's going to be overthrown, overthrown by Malai. So the Kingdom of Malai is going to really thrive under a guy named Sumdita. And you need to know his name. This should be where we left off. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so the kingdom of Malai is going to thrive under a guy called Sundita. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So Sundita is going to conquer over neighboring territories, and he's going to expand his empire. Okay, he's going to conquer the kingdom of Congo and the kingdom of Ghana. Just be aware of it. He conquers all of the territory. He converts to Islam. Who can raise their hand and tell me why he would convert to Islam? He's not devout, but he does it nonetheless. Why, Jackson? So that way he can establish good trade relations with the rest of the Islam. Okay, why? But yeah, for sure. Why, though? Why would he want to do that? He wants to create good relationships, but why? For trade. For trade. To what trade? The to increase the middle, uh, increase trade to his region, correct? So so he converts to Islam to have a common culture between the Muslims and his kingdom so they'll be more likely to come back. What do you got? Would, wasn't there the, the taxes that you have to pay that? Is that that's a, a GISA and that's in a Middle Eastern. Right, but um, that only if you're living there? That's only if you're living there, yeah. If they're trading there that you have no rule over. Then you have a guy named Mansa Musa and you need to know both of these names. Mansa Musa happens to be his grandson. He is the golden age of Malai. He is a devout Muslim. He is going to be building mosques, uh, supports Islamic scholars. He's also going to go on a Hajj. He is going to be throwing so much gold during his Hajj, he's going to devalue gold for the whole world. What do you got, Shmani? Did Sunita, like, start He made them all uh, Muslims, but he wasn't a devout. His grandson is, his grandnephew, Sundita, and uh, Musa, not Sundita. Sundita converts in order to attract more trade. Mansa Musa is a devout Muslim. So he's doing this because he really believes it's in his heart. Okay? So, after he, he's going to go on a Hajj, he's going to throw so much gold, all that stuff, uh, it eventually starts declining after his role. That's all you need to know is Mansa Musa and Sundita about Malai. It declines what? After his role. Wait, he throws so much gold there. It, it devalues gold for the world. What do you got, Avery? He was, the he was the richest man in the world. Yeah, they're making a movie out of him, about him. I know. So excited. All right. So a couple things you need to know. We're going to the east coast of Africa. Never eat. Yeah. East coast of Africa, which is along the Indian Ocean Basin. I would make a note of that. So east coast of Africa, Indian Ocean Basin. We call all of the kingdoms that are located here, we call them the Swahili states. Swahili spelled right there, okay? We call them the Swahili states because they really depend on the Indian Ocean Basin, so it's kind of a unique place. They're not really trading with other Africans. They're trading with um, the Arabs. They're trading with the Indians. They're trading with a little bit of Southeast Asia. What do you got? East Africa. It's East Africa and they're on the Indian Ocean Basin. Swahili states. So, your Swahili city states, okay, are going to become very wealthy because they happen to be in the perfect position. 
Our trade with uh, Silk Road. It's been it. Jesse, you're out. Okay, so the Swahili city states are going to be along the Indian Ocean Basin and they are going to make lots of money. They are going to be the wealthiest places in Africa because there's trade consistently occurring there. Do they have to wait for camels? No, no which only arrived during period three. They've started opening trade during uh, period two, so they're just wealthier to start. So the first city state you need to know is called Kilwa. They're very short, very briefly, you do need to know. Kilwa is on this coast, okay? You need to know that they make pottery and stoneware. That is their big export, is pottery and stoneware, okay? Eventually, they start trading gold. Okay, so they are known for their pottery and stoneware. They originally started as fishermen, however, they found that trading was more beneficial, so they started trading instead of fishing. All right, then you need to know Zimbabwe. Okay, actually skip that one, I don't care if you need that. You just really need kill one, is that fair? Because I want to cut some things out because we're going to get you moving here. Okay, now, Islam is going to be, just be aware, just listen, Islam is going to be on the East Coast. Why is it going to be on the East Coast? Why does Islam show up, Garrett? That's where the trade is, and what is the most popular religion on the Silk Road? Islam, for sure. So you're going to start seeing that people are going to be converting to Islam to attract more trade. If you have a similar culture, you'll be more likely to garner more people to come back and want to trade with you, and that's exactly what we do. Just be aware. You don't have to write anything down. However, in this Swahili state, we have traditional setup of government. We have the ruling elites, the merchant class, and the peasant class. Is any of this surprising to you? No. Okay, it's normal setup of how a government typically looks. Okay, around in the center of Africa, just be aware. We still have kinship groups because remember, Trans Saharan trade is just the top part of Africa, correct? We now have the Swahili states that are along the east coast, but everywhere else it's all kinship based groups. Okay, small groups of people living by themselves. Okay? Be aware, none of this should be surprising. Uh, men are the ones making all the money. Yes? Yeah. Men are the ones doing all the heavy work, iron. Women are farming to a degree. Okay? But most of it's staying very traditional and very common. However, you do need to put a big star because AP loves this graph. It's called age grades. African culture breaks kids up to their age levels. Africa breaks their kids up into age levels. So, you're going to write down, you are closer to people your age than you are your family. So, how old are, how many of you are 15, is that how old you are people, 15, 16? Yeah. Okay, how many of you are 15 in the room? Okay, uh, raise your hand if you're 16. You'd be kicked out of the room if we were doing age grades. You would only be around other people who are 16 years of age. That's it. You wouldn't mix with anyone who's 15. You wouldn't mix with anyone who's 17. You'd be kicked out of the room. It's called an age grade. What that means is every single person, you're going to write this down, every single person hits the same milestones at the same time. So if they decided that a year 20, everyone marries, guess what's happening when you turn 20? Everyone gets married. Even if you fell in love when you're age 18 or you fell in love in age 25, does it matter? You gotta wait. You wait till 20 and that's it. Everyone does it at the same time. And they would send age grades off to war. So all the 18 year old men, congrats, you're going to war. Okay? They would send the 18 and 19 year old men to war. It's all done by age grades. So you're closer to people your own age. Uh, you're gonna put a big star. It creates a larger sense of community. If you're connected to more people outside your family, do you care more about others? Yes, and that's why they do it. It creates a larger sense of community. Okay. Wait, uh, like what's the minimum, or what's the maximum age? You can't just say, okay, you are 74. You can only They're all pretty much dying by the age of 50. Oh. So, they're all dying out pretty quick. What do you got? Um, it's like Kiowa. There's Swahili How? states. But is it happening at the same time as the kingdoms? Yeah, or is it they're all around the same time we're going. Okay, where? What? They're on the east coast, they're on the Indian Ocean Basin. And then the kingdoms are just like... Okay, if you look back here, guys, if you take a look, look at this. This is so awesome. 
Okay, so you're transiting here in trade. Your Congo, your Kingdom of Congo, your Kingdom of Malai, Kingdom of Ghana are all going to be in this side. So they're going to cross the Saharan Desert and they're going to come to over here. That is your, um, that's your Trans-Saharan trade routes, yes? And some of the Muslims are going to go up here, but most of them are just going to cut across. All of your Swahili states are located right here, which is why they're totally unique. They're completely cut off, really, from the Trans-Saharan trade because they're, all their trade is going seaworthy while all these people are all land-based. Yes? Does that help? Is that what you want? Yes, that helps. Okay. So, slavery is your next heading. Do not write anything down until I tell you to do so. Okay? Now, slavery has always been around in Africa. However, it's going to become a big item, and that's why we're going to talk about period three. You need to know, and you're going to put a big star, Africans are selling Africans to other Africans. Africans are selling Africans to other Africans. You do not have other people showing up until the very end of three. Arab, um, uh, Arabics. No. Why do we call people from Arabia? Arabs. Hello. Why was that so hard? <coughs> Arabs are going to start buying slaves towards the end of period three. Why people don't show up till the end of period four? However, slavery has always been happening in Africa because it's Africans selling Africans to other Africans. Is everyone clear about this? Okay, so make sure you know that it's mostly for agricultural labor. They want to help farming. Do you want to go farm? No, I don't want to farm. Okay, so that's why they have slaves. They're typically captives of war. So if my if their 18 year old age grade goes and conquers Lashra's 18 year old age grade, and you guys lost, guess what you're gonna be? You're gonna be slaves. That's what happens. Witches. Yeah. Uh, if you think you were a witch, you're also going to be a man. It's pretty cool. So, just be aware. I would write, Africa, uh, slave trade is happening all over the continent of Africa. It's not just happening in the Swahili states. It's also happening along the Trans-Saharan trade routes. It's happening everywhere. Yeah, everywhere in Africa. Everywhere in Africa. Whether you're in just the kinship groups to the south, whether you're in the north in the massive kingdoms, or you're in the Swahili states, it's happening everywhere. Um, the big thing you do need to know is the Zanji Revolt is the first slave revolt in Africa. It's the first time we see African slaves revolting. Um, it's 15,000 slaves are revolting, so it's a pretty big deal. It shows how big the scope of the slavery business was. Um, however, it gets crushed. Just know that it's the first African slave revolt. Is it going to be the only one? No. For sure. All right. Be aware, you don't have to write anything down. African religions, we're going to see that they're all based on a singular male god who's in power. Okay, There's ancestral worship. They believe that religions, uh, religious leaders are always men. Oracle reading can be mostly, can be some women. Okay, It's everything you expect when you think of African religion. Can we agree? They have spells, incantations. They have a little bit of animism in it. Just be aware of it. Okay? However, you need to know that the kingdom of Aksum, the Christian kingdom of Aksum, is going to develop. This is a big deal. You need to write it down. AP loves it. The kingdom of Aksum, it's going to be a Christian kingdom in the middle of Africa. How did it become Christian? No, actually. It's the only, and you're going to put a big star, it's the only place in Africa that picks up Christianity willingly. Why, Alex? Um, well, like, um, Egypt went back when, okay, back when ancient Egypt oh didn't exist. Oh, God, your answer's wrong. No. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing to do with ancient Egypt at the moment. Why? Um, didn't, like, a ship come to their shore and they just, like, kind of talk to the king? They were like, hey, this religion is something. Yeah, there, it wasn't a ship. They had a Christian dude on a ship that was carried by Arabs. That would be, like, one Christian guy show up to the place, and he's like, oh, man. My religion's awesome. Let me tell you about it. And they're like, damn, this religion is awesome. And that's how it starts. It's by trade routes. Christianity gets there by trade routes and it organically takes over. What now, when we talk about in period four or five and six, when white people show up to Africa and start preaching Christianity, is that picked up by choice or by force to a degree? It's picked up by force. They say, hey, I'll give you inoculations for these diseases that are killing your children if you could become a Christian. 
I'll feed your starving child if you become a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, is that what Jesus wanted? No, but that's how Christianity was spread along Africa. These people genuinely want it, and they take it. So they love it, okay? You need to know it is going to be in the kingdom of Axum. They translate the Bible into Ethiopian language, okay? They do all these things. They are also going to build massive churches, and you need to know this because typically they show an image if they talk about the kingdom of Axum, where it's carved out of solid rock. The church is in the ground, carved into solid rock. It apparently looks amazing. Really? That is so cool. What did they say? It was amazing. Oh my God. It's, uh, everything is like down in the ground and into the rock and stuff like that. So when you're praying, you're cool. So you can spend more time praying and talking to Jesus. That's why they did it in the rock. Isn't that cool? Instead of doing it like a traditional church and all that stuff where it gets super hot and you're uncomfortable, you can stay cooler in the church. So it's supposed to attract more people to come to the religion. Isn't that genius? So cool, Maggie. So I also have an obelisk, which you need to know. An obelisk is like this. You need to know that. It's a symbol of Christianity. That's why we have It's the same thing as a Washington Monument is an obelisk. Yes? What do you got, Maggie? Um, okay, um, so Bantu, Bantu is the foundation of every religion in Africa. However, it's going to start changing. Just like the Phoenicians are the foundation of everyone's alphabet, then everyone makes their alphabet a little bit different. It's the same thing there. All right. How would you describe the It's... It looks like the Washington Monument. It's the Washington Monument. So I just read that monument. Yeah, do you know what the Washington Monument is? Mm-hmm. Like, it's the tall point. Like a <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You sound like them. All right, and Ethiopian Christianity, they're going to have syncretism to it. What is syncretism? What is syncretism? Alex? Blending Yeah, they're going to blend. Do you think they're going to have a white Jesus or a black Jesus? Black Jesus. Black Jesus, for sure. Okay, they're going to have a black Jesus because they want Jesus to look like him, right? You, uh, that's why uh, all of your Renaissance paintings are with a white Jesus. Was well, Jesus white? No, he's brown. I thought he was brown. Huh? He was like, have you seen he's Jesus? <laughs> he's as pasty white as you get, man. I've never, I've You've never seen Jesus? I've never seen a pasty white Jesus. I've always just seen, like, like Middle Eastern Jesus. Where have you seen a Middle Eastern Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. Like, like, even in churches, it's shown as, like, white. Like, like, are you sure? Okay. Yeah. You must not be paying attention. I literally see, like... I, but I would applaud like, any church that has a Middle Eastern Jesus. Like, the ones in, that we've seen in APR is, like, the ones I've been seeing. You haven't seen any. They're all white. Yeah, they're all white. We saw early Christian, and why would you be white in early Christian? Yeah, because it's what they, they don't like them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, moving forward to the boards. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me if you are along the Indian Ocean basin in Africa, what do we call all the kingdoms there? If you're along the Indian Ocean basin in Africa, what do we call it? Good. I got one, two, three, four. Good. What is it, Kellen? Swahili state. On your whiteboard, Kilwa, Kilwa was a Swahili state that created what? What was their export? Good. Good. What is it? Ben? Pottery. Pottery and stoneware. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the only place in Africa that picks up Christianity by choice? Good. What is it, Arima? Axum. Axum. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is what is the name of the gentleman who converts to Islam to attract traders to Malai? Is it only second period? Yes, yeah. Good. Who is it, Vendela? Sundita. You're fine. <coughs> What is the name of his grandson who is a devout Muslim who's going to go on a Hajj and devalue gold around the world? Avery. It's a Musa. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, the most important crop that's going to show up in Africa that is going to create a population boom that will affect every government? Good. Bella. 
Bananas. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, the first African slave revolt? Uh, what is it, Maggie? Zanji revolt. Perfect. All right, here we go. East Asia. All right, so your first dynasty is going to be the Sui. Now, the Sui are not going to be around for that long. They're only around for a little less than 40 years. Okay, now, the Sui are going to rise into power. You need to know that they are in charge of massive building projects. Okay, the Sui come into power and they do massive building projects using both military labor and conscripted labor. Who can tell me what conscripted labor is? Fans. Is it like paid out? Like, it's basically good. No, it's called, like, work. What is conscripted labor, Jackson? It's kind of like forced labor. Ah, give me context. It's not slavery. It would be called well, slavery like then. Slavery, but like the government like basically has you do this work. In exchange for what? Instead of paying what then? Taxes. Instead of paying taxes, you do work for the government, correct? We've heard of this before, yes? It's how with the Chin built the wall of China, Great Wall of China. Conscripted labor is when you work off your debt to the government. Yes, we've heard of this before, we know this, okay? They're going to do it. They're going to build the Grand Canal. You need to write this down, this is a very big deal. Most rivers in China go east to west. The Grand Canal is going to be man-made built, and it's going to go north to south to connect more trade routes to make it easier. Along this canal, the Grand Canal, they are going to build roads on both sides of the canal, which will increase and facilitate more trade. That's a big deal, isn't it? Okay. There you go. It's like 1,200 miles. That's insane, ladies and gentlemen. That's crazy. Okay. So, they are going to be overthrown by the Tang because people are rebelling over conscription. They're overthrown by the Tang because people are rebelling of over conscription. I think we can agree building 1,200 miles of a canal in less than 40 years would be a little daunting. Can we agree? So, people get pissed and they rebel. So, you need to know that they are going to be overthrown by the Tang. Now, the Tang, you need to know that the second emperor is uh, Tang Tzu, this dude. He's the second emperor. Now, just a little background knowledge. He's going to kill his two brothers and push his father aside to take power in China. Sounds like a great guy. Can we agree? He is your first. He is going to be a very strong ruler. You're going to put a big star. He moves the capital to Chang'an. Which I was supposed to see this summer in China. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. fine. Wait, why didn't you go? Because Trump and uh, um, Trump's having a trade war. It probably would be the best time to take a bunch of you know American teenagers. So, you need to know he's a strong ruler. He also has a massive military. You do need to know that. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so major achievements of the Tang, there's a bunch of them, so please listen up. They're going to just listen, it's not going to be on the AP exam, I don't think. They're going to extend the postal system and courier system. Why would they do that? This makes who more powerful? Who's them? The government, yes, the government more powerful. But you do need to write down the equal field system. Now, the equal field system is the second attempt in Chinese history to give land to the peasants. It's going to be done first by who? Who can raise your hand and tell me? Who? Kellen? Wang Mang! Okay, Wang Mang is the first one to do it. Why did it not work out for Wang Mang? What happened with my boy Wang Mang, Garrett? He didn't have a plan. He didn't have a plan! It was just completely unraveled. Okay, what happens to my boy Wang Mang because of his lack of a plan? What happens, Chloe? He gets assassinated. Yes! It's a terrible, it's a complete disaster, and because of it, the Han are going to collapse, correct? So, the boy, the tank. Now, keep in mind, conscription labor is affects every single person. So, in order to make up this whole sweet problem of having conscripted labor, the tang are like, hey, why don't we give them land that way they don't overthrow us, correct? Makes sense logically, would we agree? Hello? Yes? Okay. So, what they do is they create the equal field system. 
One of the biggest problems with Wang Mang's distribution of land is that he took all the land from all the wealthy people and gave it to the poor people. So who were absolutely right off the cuff pissed? The wealthy. The wealthy. He, as in the Tang, don't do this. They allow 20% of the wealthy to keep their land and in give it to inheritance, which means 20% of the wealthiest people in China, okay, they're the wealthiest people in China, are going to be able to keep their land and give it to their sons. And then they can give it to their sons. So what did they just head off? What did they stop from happening? Angry rich people, because there's nothing worse than angry rich people, correct? Have you ever met angry rich people? They're the worst. Yes, I have too. They're the worst. They're entitled. They're dreadful. They're very scary. I'd rather deal with poor, poor people. I'm just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> Okay, then they're going to give 80% of all of the other land to the people using a formula. Is this different from Wang Meng? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was a complete shit show. It was a complete disaster. Okay, so they're going to divide up the 80% of the land amongst the people based on family size and land fertility. Sounds like a pretty smart equation. Can we agree? Okay, it's going to be, you're going to write next to it in very big writing, highly effective. It works really well, and it's going to last for a long time, okay? All right. So you need to write down, this is another major accomplishment, the Imperial Civil Service Exam. It's going to start under the Song. It's going to come uh, Tang. It's going to continue under the Tang and to the Song, and then it's going to continue for another, like, 400 years. It's a big deal. So the Imperial Civil Service Exam is based on Confucian ideas, Okay. They needed to expand their bureaucracy because their government was so big. Can we agree? Remember how big they are on the map? So they needed to get a more effective bureaucrats in power. So they created a test. This test was to put only the most people and most influential and most the smartest people in power. Is that a good thing? Yes. Yes, yes for sure. Why would government job be so attractive? Why would the best and the brightest want a government job paid? Um, not always necessarily does it pay the most, but it's going to be what? How? It's uh, there's a joke that if you get a government job, you're there for life. It's really hard to get fired from a government job. Have you heard that? Like government? Have you seen what's that stupid movie about all the animals? Is it Animaltopia or something? Zootopia. Zootopia, whatever. <laughs> and they have the sloth working at the DMV. Yes. No, we. I'm yeah. trying to make sure. yes. okay. it's good. Okay. <laughs> he would never lose his job. I'm a government employee. There's only three ways I can lose my job. Okay? Okay? It's very hard to lose your job. Now, it's also government jobs have great benefits. And you can really build a family off of a government job because of its consistency. It's the same thing back in these times. If you are able to get yourself a government job, you are going to be able to pay for your family. You're going to be able to have a very comfortable lifestyle. You get guaranteed days off. You have the best of everything if you have a government job. Your parents would be so proud of you if you got a government job here in 2018. Because the benefits are awesome, the days off are great, and the work-life balance is pretty damn great. Okay? Same thing that's happening there. Everyone in China wants a government job because you're going to be set up for life. Okay? All right, you do need to know that the Tang are going to conquer Manchuria, Korea, Vietnam, and Tibet. You need to know those four regions. And from Korea, I would draw a little line that says they get the kowtow ritual from Korea. Now, kowtow is a posture that shows complete submission, and it's when it's a very fancy bow that ends with you putting your forehead to the floor to showing complete submission to them. Kowtows were originally in Korea. When the Tang take over Korea, they embrace the kowtow. They bring it back to China, um, and the kowtow is going to be used up until today. If you meet the president of China, you're supposed to kind of kowtow. Ah, uh, maybe not so much now, but your parents, you would kowtow to your parents to show respect to your parents. Have like you ever what? seen like every single time you see them? In like ceremonies, like especially oh. your elders. Like when you start your grandparents, you would absolutely kowtow every single time you see them. And stuff like Alright. Cool. All you need to know for the tank collapse is that if all the uh, the emperor becomes obsessed with music. 
And favorite concubine? What's a concubine? Huh? <laughs> Friends with benefits? No, it's his essential, essential mistress. Okay. He becomes obsessed with uh, music and his concubine, and um, everything falls to crap. Could you imagine how distracted you must be that your whole empire collapses because of music and a concubine? Like, what the hell? Anyway. Falls into chaos, and then we have rebellions that fall. That's all you need to know. To the board! Let's go, let's go, let's go. On your whiteboard, who is the founder of the Tang Dynasty? He's really the second guy, but who's the most important of the Tang? Good. Come on, come on, come on. Who is it, Aiden? Tang Chisel. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the system we're now using to put bureaucrats into power. What system are we now putting bureaucrats into power? No, What is it? Uh, Isabella. The Imperial Civil Service Exam. There you go. The Imperial Civil Service Exam is based on what belief system? Good. Logan. Confucianism. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of uh, the four regions that the Tang took over, please. Good. Good. What are they, Sadie? Uh, There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Kowtow comes from what region originally? Good. What is it? Kate. Korea. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the new capital city that the Tang created? That I was supposed to see this summer. It's fine. I'm not bitter. Actually, I'm super bitter. It's fine. What is it, Shivani? Chang on. On your whiteboard, please tell me, Chang in. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the new land distribution system? Good. Good. What is it, Aiden? You see the difference, right? Okay. What percent get to inherit their land? What percent get to inherit their land? What do you got, Chloe? 20%. Do you see how much better this system is than Wang Mang's? Do you see? That's true. That's true. But do you see how this would be effective while the other one would not? Okay. How do they decide how the 80% get their land? How do they decide that the 80% get on their whiteboard table? Good. Good. What is it, uh, Maggie? There's a formula for it that equates family size and land fertility. Pretty smart. All right. Here we go. Oh, on your whiteboard, give me all seven Chinese dynasties in order, please. Good, I like that some of you did what I told you to do. I see you, Macy. Good. Did you just note off the top? Or you had it in your notebook? No, I have these two. Okay, I'm on. I got one. I'm missing a bunch. There's seven. Good, good. Come on, come on, I got four. No, you're missing a bunch. There's seven of them total there, boss. It's like four. Good, come on, come on, come on. Macy, what are they? Zia, Shang, Zhao, Chen, Han, Sui, and Tang. There you go. Guys, on the cover of your notebook is where I'd write this. So if you have like a nice white section to the back of your cover of your notebook, I would write it there. What do you got? What about the song that is? We haven't gotten there. It's not six. Uh, That'd be your eighth dinosaur. Uh, yeah. So we're getting to eight, but right now we're in seven. So in your notebook, under it, whether on the back or in the front, I would write down. It goes Z. By the way, if you take a look at my back wall, I have a massive cheat wall that you should really appreciate how awesome it is. Zia, Shang, Zhao, Chin, Han, Sui, Tang, Song. So I'd write them down so you have them. We're going to continue to add to them, ladies and gentlemen. What do you got, Avery? Yeah, you have a bunch more coming at you. 
All right, here we go. So the next empire is the Song Dynasty. That's what you wanted? So the Song Dynasty is your next. They are the cultural heartbeat of China. Write that down. They are the cultural heartbeat of China. When you think about Chinese cultural accomplishments, it's typically done by the Song. When the Mongols come in and destroy Chinese culture, when the Chinese finally kick out the Mongols, they go back to the Song Dynasty. Okay? You do need to know that the first emperor is Song, Piazu, or whatever his name is. Okay? You need to know that he is a former military leader. However, he put civil servants, or regular people like you and me, into military positions. Does that sound like a good idea or a terrible idea? It's a terrible idea. It is a terrible idea. I have never shot a gun in my life. Do you think I should be running the U.S. government military? Wait, he did. He took. He took normal, average citizens and put them in military positions, so non-military based people to run military components. It's like putting me in front of the U.S. Army. No, it would be awful. I would have no idea what I'm doing. The whole thing would fall apart. Now, tying it back to 2018, here in the United States, does having military service matter in our presidential elections? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a huge plus when our presidents have military service. Can we agree? Okay. However, does it stop non-military presidents from becoming president? No, like uh, Barack Obama never served. Um, Jimmy Carter didn't serve. <laughs> Trump didn't serve, but so I could just off the top, I can come up with a bunch of presidents who didn't serve. However, if you do serve, is it seen as a big plus? Yeah. Yes. yes, because it's important to have people in the military control our military. Okay, so you need to know that their bureau. Uh, this is going to cause I would put the weaknesses of the song. Their bureaucracy is too big. Why would that hurt a dynasty if their bureaucracy is too big? Why would it hurt them, Avery? Kind of. Too many people working, but really, what's the big drain of that? Hey, Alex? No, they got plenty of culture going. Money. It costs a lot of money. Everyone needs to get a paycheck, correct? All right. Good job, guys. We got a lot done. True, not true. No? Yes. Yes. All right. For those of you who have not taken your AP uh, art, good luck. It should be optimistic, though. Everyone sounds like they did pretty well. They do? Yeah. I like some reason like he was so bad. Can I put so much over everything? Yeah, I'm honest. Would it help if he tested like every week? Um, yeah, I don't know. Honestly, what he should do it based on the chapter. He should do it based on like the chapter. He does the unit test. Yeah, he should be after like his one. Yeah, yeah. I'm not doing that any 65 watching. Because it's what? Is it Christianity and Islam? Yeah. 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 Ew, that's a lot. He should be chapter. Like chapter 7 and 8 was so in the world. Not all the Christianity. Christian. Or, like, My thing is like dates. Like you gotta know like what's happening at the same time. And you gotta know where it is. And I'm just like, no. Like I know like what that's what I did. Like the art. But like when it's happening. I still can't believe you didn't wear a shirt. I'm so annoyed. I had it set out laid out to wear it, and I forgot, you should have I lose extra Oh my gosh, someone texted us at like 8.15 yeah. to wear it, and I was like, no, okay, here's the thing, you can't expect me to remember to bring things like, like, that is like my biggest weakness. You're a grown woman, why I'm couldn't so we? So yeah, but I'm really bad at remembering, like, you gotta bring this money in, like, I still haven't turned my theater thing in. I still haven't either. I haven't turned my theater thing in. are all along the basin because they're traitors. They're more like destinations, yes. Yeah. They're like, they're the ones who... Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to you. And they're like having a very insane 
by now you should have somehow realized what you gotta do i don't believe that anybody feels the way i do about you now Backbeat, the word is on the street that the fire in your heart is out I'm sure you've heard it all before but you never really had a doubt I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now And all the roads we have to walk are winding and all the lights that lead us there are blinding There are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how Because maybe You're gonna be the one that saves me Today was gonna be the day, but they'll never throw it back to you By now, you should have somehow realized what you're not to do I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now And all the roads that lead you there were winding and all the lights that light the way are blinding There are many things that I would like to say to you But I don't know how I said maybe You're gonna be the one that saves me Hi, we have a lot to do today. Have you even started notes? Yeah. yeah. Barely. Okay, that's not really starting notes, friends. We what? Okay, Got like the four points down. Cool. So we're super behind. You have like 30 seconds, by the way. I don't think my eighth period is even open their notes so. Are you ready for your test, Morgan? Yes. Wait, did you take I it? Oh, oh, sorry. It's like relatively it's like, hard. I really like but I so Know who made the highest idea? Justinian. Oh, that's in my nose. No, no, no. Like the part of the actual designer. Isadora said, uh, Archimedes. Yeah. I actually studied that, but it's a private yeah. design. It's too, like, I have it written down. I don't have that in my right now. Is it only one? There's another one. What, um, this bag, do we need? Like, the back of my notes, I know. Dates now. We need to put down, um, like, both, like, which one, 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 which one,
It's so nice. Oh my god, guys, come on, we got things to do. Two, one, great and great, let's go. Nope. Great and great, who got them all right? No one got them all right. All right, who has Sophia's? Seven, 
Perfect. All right, total it up for the day. Please pass them to Nick. Nick, just toss them in a pile. Did you do this yesterday? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Just toss them in a pile. Don't put them in order. Perfect. All right, take out your notebook. Take out your whiteboards. Let's go. We have a lot to cover. You are behind, friends.